First last mile to transit, we're going to go over definitions and origins. Now first, a quick definition. It's the movement of people and goods from a hub to a final destination. Quick and easy, right? So how did this get started? Well, first last mile is actually a concept that was used first for actually delivering electricity to houses. It's easy to transmit electricity along long lines, but for uh, electric companies, that, that difficult last mile to get to individual houses. Same thing applies to someone like FedEx, where it's easy to move big packages along highways, but really their most complex part of the system of delivering a package is to your doorstep. This also applies to transit riders. Here in this screen, we look at some of the origins of First Last Mile, and this is from Arlington County, Virginia, along their Orange Line Corridor. This started back in the 60s when a lot of the community leaders wanted to really focus economic development around the transit stations. So the highest density would be right above the station area, and then the density would taper down to the neighborhoods and not really extend more than a quarter of a mile. So as you can see from these little circles, this is what first mile, last mile looks like when you're only looking at a quarter mile. Fast forward, now today we look at access sheds uh, for walking and for biking. And here you see uh, for walking we look at one mile radius and for biking it's at three. And this is actually recognized by the Federal Transit Administration. Now at the top you can see these are measurements as the crow flies. But unfortunately, commuters don't fly. So now we're taking an even deeper look at really what matters for those access sheds and how we can make the walk even more convenient, that first mile and that last mile. Why now? Well, there's greater attention to a user's journey. So maybe in the past, we would construct these different transit stations and transit schedules according to what was good for the transit agency, what was easy to deliver in a bus system. But when you flip that and look at the user, it becomes a whole different series of planning steps where you look at how they leave their house, figure out the schedule, get to the station. And it's not just a mode, it's basically the infrastructure on which they travel. Is it in good repair? Does it directly go where they need to go to reach the station? Then once they've arrived at their destination, how do they get to their final place of work or shopping? And what does that mode look like? And what does that infrastructure look like? And that is basically at the core of First Last Mile. Writ another way, we've talked a lot about walking and biking, but we are in an exciting new time where there are a lot of different ways to even roll to transit. And so you can see segways, scooters, bicycles. And now we've got even more technology coming to bear that maybe even extends that access shed more than three miles. So Uber and Lyft, if someone knows they can get a shared ride, maybe on a rainy day or when their schedule doesn't permit that full allotment of time. We've got on-demand transit or micro transit where you've got these little electric shuttle buses that are almost like dial -a ride to come get you in a concentrated area. These began in resorts but are coming to neighborhoods around the country now. And of course, electric bikes even further expand that three miles. Then we've also got e-commerce starting to come about at different station areas. So you might have pickup lockers. Uh, you'll have bike delivery, you'll have uh, pick up at the grocery store, and maybe even on-demand delivery. And so now what you're seeing is the convergence of people and goods movement, just because when we start making investments in transit, for one uh, specific use, it benefits all. And that's one of the things I want you to take away from this course, because as e-commerce grows, our jobs will begin to uh, have to look at this a much more detailed level. And then finally, why now are we looking at first last mile? A lot of it is the benefits of placemaking, where we talk about bringing more of the attributes of transit-oriented development to more areas. But we're also looking at using existing assets better. How can we design our streets better and add more uses? 
I also want to show you this statistic because it's rather stunning. Uh, in Portland State University, they looked at access and really what that did for housing values with protected bike lanes and advanced bike facilities. And if there was increased access within a quarter of a mile, it added around $686 to the value of a home. But here's where the real magic begins. By not just adding one facility, but deliberately thinking of a network of protected lanes, that ended up adding $4,000. So it's not just access to one facility, but an extensive network. And we're going to use the word network a lot in this presentation. So chapter two, what's the recap? Number one, first last mile, we're looking at increasing ridership with convenience and safety and accessibility. Second, we're gonna do that by reducing the travel times and making them more comfortable and more legible. We're going to provide multiple options and economic development. And then finally, the goods and passengers movement is beginning to converge. So as planners, we need to think ahead.